Welcome to my daily thought. This is the first volume of the new supplement to the Keeping It Real with KC show. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this if you're listening on the podcast and if you're watching on YouTube or Daily Motion. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I added this just to throw some thoughts out there. I don't do the usual things I do during the Keep It um, Real with KC show, which is mostly a weekend show. I don't really do the housekeeping as I usually do then. I will tell you all the important links are in the details section. So if you need to follow KIRWKC.com or whatever, but all of the important links are in the details section if you're listening or watching. As for this, my goal is to do a daily thought, obviously daily, Monday through Friday, and do that. And if you listen to the previous podcast on Keeping It Real with KC, you will know that I was looking to do this. My daily thought today is more of a therapy session for me, is what it is. Because I, and believe it or not, the way I map out the shows of what I plan on doing or talking about, I have Excel spreadsheets for both my channels. Because for those of you who have been listening to previous episodes or watching previous episodes, you know that I have two channels. This one, I don't deal with politics at all. My other one is mostly politics. But for both of those channels for both of the channels I keep track of everything on an Excel on an Excel spreadsheet I kept changing the title for this volume I changed it about five times when it came to what my daily thought would be what I would discuss because I I wasn't Sure, and every time I thought I had something that I would like to talk about, another thought popped in my head, and I'm like, oh, well, that would be good, too. So now, I finally decided on the thought, which is the title of this volume, of this particular supplement and series. Lately... I have had no chill. And as I said before, this is just a quick therapy session for me and more entertainment for you. And as I wrap it up, I will bring it back to you and how maybe it will be cathartic for both of us and not just me. <laughs> I, I'm sure some of you know who follow the show that I watch tarot card readings because they're very interesting. I don't always agree with what's said, but the delivery and some of the things that are brought up, it always makes me think. Just like removing what doesn't serve you, that is something that a lot of people, if you watch tarot card readings on YouTube, that's something that a lot of tarot card readers say all the time. Remove what doesn't serve you, especially if you get a lot of swords in the picture. Um, lately, where I have been interacting with people, the politeness that I usually have, the empathy that I usually have, hasn't really been there. And side note and shameless plug, polite versus fake, check out that episode. The Cliff Notes version, polite is the bare minimum. Fake is going above and beyond when you don't even care. I'm usually polite to people regardless of how I feel. I may have a crazy look on my face or I may look at somebody like they're crazy. But I'm still polite throughout the process. And even when I don't feel like being bothered, I'm usually still polite throughout the process. Another thing about me is that I've always been an empathetic person. 
I always have empathy. If someone texts me, even if I don't feel like answering the text right away, if they text me, I would answer right away. I answer right back. If someone calls me, even if I don't feel like talking on the phone, sometimes I won't answer, but more times than not, I would pick up the phone even if I wasn't in the mood because I knew whoever was calling was calling for a reason and they may need me to be a listening ear, which I'm very known for. As you know, throughout my previous episodes, I know many secrets and people tell me their secrets because A, I don't tell anybody and B, I don't judge people. I have an opinion about people always. I have an opinion. We'll all have opinions. But even when I have an opinion about someone, I'm not going to judge them because you can't walk in somebody else's shoes. So I would be that listening ear is what I would do even when I didn't always have the energy or feel like doing it. Lately, and the funny thing is, a lot of tarot card readers had said for the sign of cancer, the moon had changed back in July where the moon went into something. <laughs> and now they said the moon changed again and Uranus is going retrograde and it's creating this Mars energy and it will make you more irritable and more fiery and more combative and all this other stuff. And I can honestly say there has been some truth to that because where I have dealt with situations where if somebody has texted me lately, if I'm not in the mood to be bothered with the text, I won't even answer. I won't, I won't even care. Where usually I make it a point to always answer people's texts within 24 to 48 hours, but usually within 24 hours to be polite, I'll answer someone's text. My mood right now, lately, if it's a text that doesn't contribute to my current goals, I'm just like, well, I'll answer it when I answer it. And if it's a text about some nonsense, I won't answer it at all. The same thing with phone calls. I'm not, I'm not really having conversations with people that don't serve me. Sort of like when I was mentioning in one of my episodes, remove what doesn't serve you. And it's taking some adjusting because I've had no chill where I've made it clear I'm not answering texts or I'm not answering phone calls. Or I tell people, I don't want to talk about that flat out. And I haven't had a problem where usually I would be polite and then work it into the conversation. Now it's just, it just comes out at the beginning if I see it's about to go somewhere. I'm adjusting to that. At the same time, it has been, it's lifted a lot off of my shoulders because I am an empath. When people tell me their problems, especially even for people I don't know personally, when they tell me their problems, I feel like I'm taking their problems on my shoulder, on my shoulders. And it, I, my brain automatically starts thinking, how can I help them solve their problems? What advice can I give to them to help them solve their problem? Because I don't want them to have to go through any type of suffering or anything that they're going through, which is weird because naturally I don't like people. I'm a very moody person. I'm true to my sign. I don't like being bothered with people. But at the same time, I want everyone regardless of their background, what they may believe or, or whatever. I want everyone 
to be happy. I want everyone to be healthy. I, I want people to be content and without, with as few problems as possible. Obviously, you will, people have to have problems. They have to be battle tested. Another, keeping it real with KC episode, battle tested. And also, re related, another episode, comfort and growth aren't friends. But at the same time, even though I know these things, I know people have to be battle tested. I know that comfort and growth aren't friends. When people bring their issues or when I hear about an issue through another or a problem, through another source, it still for some reason does touch my heart where I'm like, wow, I wish they didn't have to go through that. I don't pity. I don't pity. It's very rare I pity anyone. I think pity is the largest, one of the largest insults that someone can make is by pitying someone. So I don't do, I don't do that. I don't make it a habit to do that. Which pity, pity is another thing for another day. But lately, I've been adjusting to being just a little bit selfish and saying, I'm focusing on my goals. I'm taking my, I'm reclaiming my time. I said I never get political on this show, but that may, anytime someone says that, it just makes me laugh. But yeah, I'm reclaiming my time. So, and I've been in the process of doing that these past few weeks, and I haven't had any chill doing it. I've been unapologetic about it. Some people have been upset with me, family members, friends whatever, have been upset with me on how I have approached situations or how I have interacted with them. What they don't understand is that I still love them. I love them as much now, if not more, than ever. And what I have been doing is to get myself to a better place where I can be an even stronger support than I have been in the past. And not having any chill, the people who know me aren't used to that. Now, I will get reckless with my mouth after a certain point. Don't think I just let stuff blow over and blow over and blow over. I give a few passes. But after the passes have run out, then I get reckless. Lately, I've been kind of reckless up front. And I'm adjusting. My name, KC Phoenix. I picked that name for a reason. I picked the name as my persona my entertainment name or stage name or whatever you want to call it. One reason is because of the phoenix. It always rises from the ashes. And when it rises from the ashes, I think of never giving up. And it has to pretty much burn itself to be reborn again. The initials KC stand for my favorite snake, the King Cobra. The King Cobra is probably one of the most misunderstood snakes there is. The reason it's my favorite snake, Green Anaconda is my second favorite snake because I, I like snakes. But the King Cobra is my favorite snake because A, it eats other snakes. B, out of all the snakes, 
that is the one snake that gives the most warnings. It flares its hood as a warning. It will hiss as a warning. It will raise its body up off the ground as a warning. It will do a hollow bite as a warning. A hollow bite meaning it'll bite you, but it won't inject this venom into you, which it knows that it's deadly, that its venom is potent. And it'll do a hollow bite to say, hey, back off before I give you the real thing. That's why it's my favorite snake. It offers so many warnings to say, hey, chill out, back off. I haven't been true to that part of my name, the KC, because all of this happened. All of these changes happened without warning. And I know some people are like, where is this coming from? This isn't the person I know. But in order to reclaim my time and in order to be reborn into a better person, into a stronger person, I, I haven't had the luxury of having any chill, sadly. But I feel things are, will normalize soon and I'm adjusting. And that's my daily thought for today. Lately, I've had no chill, but I'm working on it. And my temperament is starting to stabilize as the days go on. I am not apologizing for any of my actions because I said what I said and I did what I did. I will say that for those who know me, I still love you the same. And when it comes to the fire of the Phoenix, the thing about fire is it can keep negative things away and it can burn away certain things that are not helpful to your energy. It helps keep balance. And if your fire has to burn bright sometimes and supernova level hot just to keep things away from you so you can maintain your balance. There isn't anything wrong with that either. Every now and then you, you have to let loose. You can't have any chill every now and then. This isn't something that should be a habit all day, every day, because I believe we should all help each other. And I, I believe that we should all be there for each other. Me personally, that's my belief. But sometimes you have to reclaim your time. And if you have to do that by having no chill, so be it. And that's my daily thought. Thank you so much to those who have been watching the episodes and those who have been listening, kirwkc.com for the podcast. The important links of everything else is in the details section. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that stuff on all the social media platforms. I love you more than you will ever know, and I sincerely mean that from my heart. I really, really mean it from my heart. Be blessed.